Hi friends and welcome back. It's Miss Birgit again. And today we are going to be talking about the feeling of feeling brave. Now, oftentimes when we think about feeling brave, we think about doing really big things, monumental things, things that maybe involve running into danger or rescuing someone. And those are amazing and definitely involve bravery. But most of us can't really relate to having experiences in which we've done things like that. So instead, I want us to think about times in which we have tried something new that really has taken courage or continued to persist at doing something difficult that has really required us to be brave, to take a positive risk knowing that we're putting ourselves out there, we're being vulnerable because we're not yet good at it. We might even be trying something that's tricky for us, but doesn't appear so difficult for others. And that really does involve being brave. And today, the book I'm going to share with you, I think is an amazing story and one in which a lot of people can relate to. And um, it has to do with being brave and sticking with learning a skill that everyone does and spends a lot of time doing in school, and that is the skill of reading, which is something that does not come easily to a lot of people and involves a lot of hard work and patience with oneself. And yes, it involves bravery because it involves taking risks, trying over and over and over again, even if you're not getting it quite right. So the book I'm going to share with you today is written and illustrated by Hudson Talbot. It's called A Walk in the Woods. And actually, it's based on his story about himself. And at the end, he has a note to us as readers that I'm also going to share with you um, because I found it really poignant, really important. So I hope you enjoy this book. It's called A Walk in the Words. A Walk in the Words. Drawing always came naturally to me. I drew all the time. I just did it, like breathing. Every day, after playing with my friends, I'd come home and draw stories that I made up. It was like diving into my own world. I liked words too, one at a time. When I was reading, I had to picture every single word. Horse, word, tall, small, Ant, aunt, birds, mirror. But long sentences? No way. I would start a long sentence and then my mind began to wander. I was the slowest reader in my class. When everybody was turning to the next page, I was still on the first sentence. Nobody knew. But the books knew, and they were coming for me. So many words, so many pages. Books weren't always scary. The first ones were friendly, with big pictures and only a few words. Howdy, but little by little, the pictures got smaller and the text got longer. Me eat pictures you read. I could pick out the words that I knew, but the rest looked like squiggles. It was a reign of terror. My drawing pad was my safe place.
A whole page of text looked like a wall, keeping me out. By now, everybody in my class was reading book after book, except me. What if they found out that I couldn't keep up? I had to face it. I was alone and lost in a world of words. Everywhere I looked, there were big words, strange words, scary words, intimidating, perfectionism. Oh, I can't even read some of these. Innuendo. Inspiration. One big word, though, was stalking me. Overwhelm. It described the feeling of too many words coming at me at the same time. It made me want to give up. But I loved stories too much to quit. I was good at picturing stuff. Maybe I could try picturing a way out. I grabbed overwhelm and broke it over and broke it off over. So it just said, whelm. It meant the same thing, but it was more my size. Now I could whelm the words before they overwhelmed me. I'd just read at my own pace. After all, it was my walk in the words. Aspiration, audacious, curiosity, trepidation. I took time to look for words that I knew. There they were like stepping stones leading me onward. This way, trust yourself, go for it. This is your path, these are your words. I jumped over the words I didn't know and let the words I knew lead me into the story. After a while, I wasn't thinking about reading. I just wanted to know what happened next. The war between my fear of reading and my curiosity was over. Curiosity won. Books are saying, we come in peace. Yeehaw! Books weren't so scary once I got to know them. And now that I was beginning to like words, why rush past them? Read at your own speed. I realized that just because I was slow at reading didn't mean that I had to fear it. I also learned that many great people were slow readers. I honored them all in my Slow Readers Hall of Fame. Look who we have. William Shakespeare, Sojourno Truth, Alexander Graham Bell, George Washington, Thomas Edison, Muhammad Ali, Joan of Arc, Picasso, Leonardo da Vinci, Annie Oakley, Albert Einstein, Babe Ruth, and I tore down that terrible wall of shame. Slow readers savor the story. I experimented with ways to tell my stories. I could still tell a story with pictures. Or I could tell it with words. The monster from Planet Mongo, chapter 18. The monster cornered me, my gun jammed. I had to think fast or Earth was doomed. My favorite way was using both. The monster attacked the space station. People ran for their lives, help the monster. He saw me, front view. 
I had to stop the monster before he reached Earth! <laughs> Yikes, my ring on jammed! I remembered how my horses got better the more I drew them. My writing would improve, too, if I rode every day. A drawing could show what a horse looked like, but with words I could bring them to life. Now they could breathe and snort and carry me on adventures. I read every day in search of new words for my stories. It was like finding new colors for my art, but now I was learning to paint with words. There were still times when I felt lost in a sea of words. My drawing pad was still my safe place. Others found music, sports, math, and science. Words had always scared me, but once I felt free to read at my own speed, they became my friends. I could unlock the magic of stories and even become a storyteller myself, turning that sea of words into an ocean of possibilities. Epiphany. Transcendence. Magnificent. Intellectual. Now, all I have to do is enjoy the ride. I'm going to show you now, or rather read to you, the author's note. And let me quick show you a picture of the author. This is what he says. Long ago, when I was learning to read, there was no such thing as the word dyslexia in common usage, or even a pleasant phrase like reluctant reader. I was just slow. I still feel a twinge from the scars left by those early memories of shame that came from the pressure to read faster than my natural pace. It occurred in my beginner's reading group. I was still sounding out the words aloud while the other first graders were reading silently. The teacher put a slip of paper between my lips to keep my mouth from moving. The other kids snickered. The message sank in. I was bad at reading. Words were not my friend. After school, I would go home, draw for a while, and then open a volume of the World Book Encyclopedia just to look at the pictures. Without the pressure to keep up with the other kids, I found myself reading enough of the text to understand what the pictures were illustrating. My curiosity guided me. The pictures were the catalysts, but the words told the stories. That was my ticket out. By stringing together the words I knew and reading them at my own pace, the universe of stories gradually opened up for me. The less I thought about reading, the more I read. I had crossed a threshold. Fear no longer prevented me from finding my own way with words. I would go on to use them to express my point of view in writing, the way that paint and pencils did in my art. There was a lot to explore. Curiosity had won. I hope that my story will help to heal those who bear similar scars to mine and will empower young readers who are on their own journey to literacy. And with that, I want to leave you with thoughts of positivity. We all have moments in which we can be brave. We all have moments in which we work to persist to take positive risks, to keep trying, and to see in ourselves that we can, we are worthy of trying, we can be brave and find the courage in ourselves to keep working at something because we can continue to learn and grow. With that, have an awesome rest of your day and until next time, take care.